In recent years, you may have noticed the increased, often incongruous use of rap and hip-hop in movie and video game trailers. Not while I have breath in my lungs and a blade in my head. Whether it's ancient Japan or a gothic romance, anything is fair game for a bit of auto-tune. Mostly it's been confined to obvious schlock, but to hear it in Gladiator 2 from Ridley Scott, I don't know, I guess I wasn't expecting it. Tears on the mausoleum floor. The you see in the song he's talking about the Colosseum and in the movie you get it, it's like poetry. Honestly though, who's in charge of the marketing for these movies? The music in every trailer now is either a slowed down piano version of an older theme or it's rap or the music is cut to every beat of the action so that everything goes Long after it's become a meme, almost every movie trailer conforms to at least one of these categories. I understand that for Gladiator 2, the song more than likely isn't even in the movie, but first impressions are important. I was never that interested in a Gladiator 2 in the first place, but watching the trailer I could at the very least appreciate the production design, until all of a sudden the Colosseum turned into the cookout and gave me the impression, oh, I guess no one is really taking this seriously then. Is the music because Denzel Zell is here, looking like he's playing the same guy he did in Training Day. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> that can't be right, can it? That would be weird. Surely Hollywood marketing firms would never be that unscrupulous. More than likely though, the choice of music for the Gladiator 2 trailer has less to do with courting any one racial demographic than it does with courting a certain age demographic. It has more to do with where and how the trailer is being broadcast. Where, once upon a time, trailers aired before movies and on television, and then later on YouTube, now they also have to perform on TikTok and Instagram. Now you can try and sell movies to Zoomers with nuked attention spans, some of whom weren't even born at the time of the original film's release, many of whom couldn't care less, but then you of course risk alienating the people most likely to see the film in the first place, that being fans of the original. There seems to be this notion that you can sell something to everyone at once. Movies now have to sell to the old and nostalgic. They have to sell to the young and diverse. They have to sell to China. Nine times out of ten, though, when trying to appeal to everyone, you only end up appealing to no one. The point of this video isn't necessarily to point and laugh at a movie trailer. A trailer isn't necessarily indicative of the quality of a film. Gladiator 2 could be really good. It could be really bad. It could be something in between. But then again, I think there is some merit to the idea that a one-size-fits-all approach to marketing a film does lead to a one-size-fits-all approach to how they're made. While I never had much interest or expectation for a Gladiator 2, I did expect a little bit more. It's ironic that a film about the fall of Rome would so resemble the last flickering embers of the Hollywood Empire, fighting a losing battle against video games, social media, and ultimately, irrelevance.